Hello folks, Dylan here. How's everybody doing? This week's big nerd news is that the FCC has voted to restore net neutrality. And uh, like a lot of the big nerd news, if you don't know what the FCC is and you don't know what net neutrality is, you're probably wondering why is this even news at all. Now, net neutrality is uh, one of the really important principles, I think, of having a free and open internet. And uh, let, let's explain it like this. Let's imagine for a second that uh, we are in charge of the highways, the roads, freeways, streets, autobahns, auto routes, whatever you want to call them. Um, and we, we're in charge of them and we decide that we want to make a bunch more money because this whole like, you know, just, just building roads and letting people drive on them, that's not making us nearly enough dollar. And so we go out and we say, right, what can we do? I got a good idea. How about let, let's take the speed limits off and then we're going to go to all the car manufacturers and we're going to say, hey, uh, how much money would you give us to let people driving your cars have special privileges on the, the public roads? And BMW turn around. We go to BMW like, hey, what's it worth? And they're like, I tell you what, if you can make the speed limit for BMW drivers 170 miles an hour, we'll give you a bajillion dollars. So we do. Yeah, there we go. BMW 170. Then we go to Audi and we're like, hey, you see the, what BMW did? Do you want in on that action? And Audi are like, yeah, absolutely. Here's a bajillion dollars. BMW's 170. Audi's 170. And Ford, they kind of get word of this. And they're like, well, we, we don't quite have a bajillion, but we'll give you quite a lot of money if you make the limit for Ford's 150. And then Toyota come along and they're like, can we, can we have 90? Like, we'll give you half a bajillion dollars for a 90 mile an hour limit. And at that point we decide, yeah, you know what, that, that's pretty, that's it. End of auction, thank you everybody. All other brands, cars, makes, models, limited to 50 miles an hour on these roads. And so you're driving along in your Volkswagen at 50 and a BMW goes past at 170 and you're thinking, this, this doesn't seem fair at all. And then, big oil come along and they're like, hey, uh, we heard the freeways are for sale. Uh, how about we give you 50 bajillion dollars to ban electric cars? No more electric cars allowed. And what's happened is something that was a public utility, you know, the road network, is now up for sale to the highest bidder. And people, you know, individuals, businesses, you can no longer rely on being able to use that with the same privileges as everybody else because this principle of discriminating certain kinds of traffic has been, uh, you know, enforced in the way that this utility is being managed and the way it's being provided. Now, network neutrality is the principle that stops us being able to do this on the internet. It's the thing which says, uh, you know, Google can't come along and give your internet provider a bunch of money and in exchange your ISP has to throttle traffic that's going to Bing. Or, you know, Gmail can't, Google can't pay to make Gmail go faster and Outlook.com go slower. Or Disney Plus can't come along and go, hey, you know what, we'll give you a bunch of cash if you uh, prioritize Disney, uh, streaming traffic, and in exchange you throttle Netflix and Amazon Prime. This is not allowed to happen. Now, that, that's network neutrality, is the thing that stops this happening. And in the United States of America, network neutrality has a really, really kind of complicated history. Um, internet providers in America are regulated by the Federal Communications Commission. Well, kinda. Um, communications in the US is regulated by the FCC. It has been for a long, long while, going back to, I think, about 1938 or something. And this covers uh, radio, and it covers television, and it covers the telephone network, and it covers internet. And the FCC uh, kind of has the, these two different classifications. They have what is called Title I, Information Services, which is things uh, broadcast, radio, television, and it has Title II, Common Carriers, which historically was the telephone network. And the FCC is allowed to regulate Title II services. So the FCC is allowed to say, oi, you're not allowed to make your phone bills that high. You've got to bring them back down. That is unfair. The FCC is allowed to make sure that phone companies are not prioritizing calls from particular customers, that everyone has, you know, fair, equal and transparent access to the telephone network, which is seen as a, you know, a public utility, something that everyone should, should be able to take advantage of. Now, 
in large parts of America, um, the only broadband service providers in the market is one of these four. So Comcast, AT&T, Verizon, and Charter Communications, uh, basically between them, they're, they're massive. I mean, these are huge companies. But there are also large parts of the US where customers only have one of these. So there's about 80 million people in the USA who, if they want to get broadband, they have a choice of one or dial up. And the one is whichever one of these big four happens to be operating in their jurisdiction. And in 2007, there was a bunch of folks uh, subscribed to Comcast who uh, noticed that their network traffic was getting throttled and uh, they were using the BitTorrent protocol to download files, which is, you know, that's fine. That's a valid use of the network. And Comcast was throttling it and they complained and they complained to the Federal Communications Commission and said, uh, hey, FCC, we're paying Comcast for internet traffic and they're throttling our internet traffic and we don't think they should be allowed to do that. And uh, the FCC said, yeah, Comcast, you're not allowed to do that. So Comcast complied, they stopped throttling and then they sued the FCC and they said, uh, you're not actually allowed to interfere and we want the court to uh, come in and back us up on this and tell us that, yeah, the FCC does not have jurisdiction to administer, to regulate internet service providers. Now, it happened. The court came down on the side of Comcast, but the court there, they didn't say anything about network neutrality. What they explicitly said was that the FCC was not authorized to regulate internet service providers. This is in 2010. And uh, as a result of this, the FCC said, maybe we should start codifying this, this idea about network neutrality. You know, what are we really talking about here? And so they drafted a thing called the US Open Internet Order 2010, which said uh, transparency, users have to be able to see exactly what is happening to their traffic. You're not allowed to block it. You're not allowed to cut off specific ports, protocol services, and no unreasonable discrimination. You know, there's exemptions for uh, regulating the integrity of the network. So cutting off things like de denial of service attacks, those kinds of things. Um, but broadly speaking, an uh, internet service provider's job is to carry packets from one place to another without worrying about what's in those packets or where they came from or where they're going too much. Now, this was struck down. Verizon sued the FCC and said, you don't have permission to do this. You don't have the authority to enforce these regulations against us. Uh, and they won. 2014 was, uh, you know, generally seen as the end of network neutrality in the United States. Now, in the immediate kind of aftermath of this, a lot of other places around the world went, oh, that's bad. Could, we, could that happen here? And in the European Union, that led to something called the European Open Internet Order, which became law in 2015, end of 2015. And so everywhere in the European Union and in the UK, because this is one of the articles of the retained EU law that is still uh, the law in the, in the UK where I'm from, uh, says no blocking, no throttling. Uh, every European must have access to the open internet and all traffic will be treated equally. Now, back in the United States, this is where things start to get a little bit surreal. Uh, 2015, the same time as the EU Open Internet Internet regulation, the FCC has had this ruling coming down saying, uh, you know, the, the Verizon case said the FCC does not have the authority to regulate um, internet providers because internet providers are Title I. They are information services. They are not under Title II, which is common carriers. And the FCC says, well, who decides that? And <laughs> The court says, well, the FCC decides. And so in 2015, under the Obama administration, the Federal Communications Commission goes, you know what? Internet providers, yeah, they're Title II. They're common carriers. Network neutrality. We have the right to enforce it. Two years later, under the subsequent administration, the uh, FCC, which by this point has a different voting board. There's, I think, five people on the voting board of the FCC. And, you know, there's a checks and balances. Only three of them can be kind of, you know, aligned with a single political party. But it swings. You know, there's an element of politics involved here. So uh, 2017, the FCC flips about and says, nope, we changed our minds. Uh, internet providers are Section 1 or Title 1 again. They are information services. Um, we don't have the authority to regulate them, which means they can do whatever they want, including, you know, taking kickbacks and deals from whatever companies. And we can't do anything about it. Sorry, it's outside our jurisdiction. And what happened last week is uh, they flipped again. They uh, turned around and the Federal Communications Condition um, voted to reclassify broadband services as a Title II telecommunication service, which means it's a common carrier, which means the FCC can regulate it again. Now, you know, this could change again next time there's a, a change on the board. This is just a vote. They take a vote on it and they can change their minds because they have the authority to decide 
whether they get to enforce it or not. So it all depends on the political makeup of whoever's on the voting board of the FCC from one administration to the next. But, you know, so far, I think last week is, is good news. I think network neutrality is a really, really important principle. And I think uh, this is a good day for the free and open internet in the United States and around the world. Folks, thanks for tuning in. I hope, as always, that you found that interesting. You take it easy, you look after each other, and I'll catch you next time.